21 of the national lockdown and had it not been for the extension today would have been our last day and for sure many people uh, are still slightly anxious about the extension but we all know that it's something that is much needed now in today's conversation i'm actually very excited about this one because i'm sure um, you know a lot of people are trying to navigate how they can get into the property market especially if you you're thinking maybe you're not going to uh, be able to get as many properties as you'd like on your personal capacity and want to perhaps go in with some friends or some family in um, buying a few properties and of course today's topic is is taking advantage of lower interest rates as a property stock file. And we're going to be exploring, uh, you know, first of just taking it back to basics. So exploring some of the do's and don'ts in setting up a property stock file, the best practices in setting a property stock file up, and how you can best position yourself and your property stock file in making sure that you can maximize your returns, but also take advantage of these lower interest rates. And joining me this evening, we have Slim Dile Luciano, who is the chairperson Person of the Saki Seas, we are property stock file, as well as Baliso Lehulu, who is a finance professional and an author. Ladies, good evening. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. So I think I'm just going to um, actually start with you, Baliso. I mean, you've recently uh, published a book on stock files, um, and I want us to just first take it to basics around if somebody is looking into setting up a stock file, in particular property stock file, what are some of the things they actually need to be looking at in terms of their governance and perhaps structuring it as best as possible? Um, I think, first of all, we have heard of, we know of the traditional stock file from a lot of us, especially uh, from back black uh, backgrounds uh, where it was used to buy for basics like your groceries and your funeral um, community helping each other through the model. So as time goes and as we evolve with time, the, the, the stock fell model is being used even as a vehicle to invest, whether it's into property or other assets. So the, the principles are still the same, but we need to make them much stricter if you are going to be investing in such a um, uh, complicated asset as property. So the first thing, obviously, is getting the right people to come together and, uh, to, and know that they are going to be an investment um, type of stock file. Um, the right people would be, you have to know, discuss this before everything else that you, this is for investment, this is for long-term, this is not a get rich quick scheme, and we wanna do this right, and this is the type of asset property that we are specifically looking into. So everybody is on the same page from the word go, the right people and the type of investment that you are doing, which is property then you need to conduct it in putting the papers into place. So the first thing would be obviously drafting a constitution. Um, the most proper thing to do would be getting the help maybe of, an, of a legal professional to help you draft um, a constitution that will be able to, uh, to, to present your, your goals and the blind spots that you might uh, come across because buying property or investing in an asset you might come up across things as a group is not the same as doing it alone so you need to cover yourself and the members that you're starting a stock file with so the 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 constitution would be like your governance of the group the governance of the stock fell in order to be able to align into your vision of what type of property you're going to be investing in, how you're going to be investing in, who are the people that you're going to be working with in terms of assisting you, and um, also to just to line out the complications that might come up in terms of what is the expectation as members uh, in your journey of starting this property stock fill. So the first thing and foremost is a constitution. It's the Bible of the stock fill. I just want, sorry to interrupt you there, Palissa. I want to bring in um, Slindile right now to just give us perhaps a sense of what are some of the things that would go into this constitution, particularly because uh, you're chairperson of Sakisis or property stock file. So really looking at perhaps what are some of the clauses that you ought to be considering or um, almost a non-negotiable explore having this particular clause, um, particularly when you're looking in investing in property or you using the stock file as a vehicle um, in, in your property investments. 
Um, okay, um, hi ladies. So the the stock file is like a, um, it, it, it's a it's a binding document on the members. So before you join any any stock file, whether it be property, whether it be grocery, whatever it is, that's a very important document that you should read and understand. If you don't understand, get somebody else. If need be, get a legal person to review it on your behalf because especially with something like property where large amounts of money are involved and the period of investment tends to be longer in nature. So some of the most important clauses that would be in there, for example, is what is the vision or the mission of the office? What are we trying to achieve? That's the most important thing because um, property stockholders are different each other. They each achieve different objectives. Is the objective that we to buy each other uh, properties as members, or are we going to raise deposits when we use those deposits to buy the property? Are we going to invest in rental property? Are we trying to achieve? So that vision of the stock fell is very important so that you make sure that you are aligned because you don't want to just enter a random stock fell and then you find out down the line that this is not actually what you had in mind. And obviously there's things around um, contributions. How much do you need to pay? Um, how often do you need to pay it? What happens if you don't pay? Um, and then also in terms of the, the profit sharing that's going to happen, how are you going to benefit from the stock fell? What is, what is in it for me as a member joining the stock fell? And then another important thing is exit. A lot of people enter into these kinds of agreements and then only to find that they've locked themselves into a five-year investment, which is illiquid, illiquid and you can't get your money out for a period of five years. So understand what is the exit of that. Then there's other, other clauses that are not as important, but the other, I think those are the critical ones around maybe if there's going to be meetings, how often that happens, um, as well as who your executives are. That's very important because you need to make sure that you put people in charge that um that are that are, um have got the the skills or the experience or even the, the passion to do that job because it's mostly a thankless job um in most stock sales where you are the you are the treasurer or the chairperson or the secretary so people just expect you to do work for nothing so it's sometimes it's a thankless job but it's a very important one because you need to make sure that the people that are in charge of running the stock sale a know what they're doing and b have got the time and passion for it so that's also quite important. And Balisa, you know, what would you say are some of the, the best practices, um, and not just only in property stock files, uh, but in, in stock files in general, that people, I think in addition to what Slee has kind of outlined, should be mindful of when they are setting up their particular property stock file? Well, firstly, you need to take your stock files seriously. Um, no more just as a, as a social play play thing anymore if you are going to be using it as an investment. So you need to treat it almost like a business. So you need to run it professionally. Make sure that documents are in place, your constitution, you have the bank in the stock file um, name, you have the right signatories, which is about three people. Uh, you, you're protecting yourself in terms of working with experts and, and professionals where you lack skills in terms of running um, the stock fell. So for me, the most important thing is running the stock fell professionally as a business and getting help from experts in terms of where you lack in terms uh, in, in skills. So constitution always needs to be reviewed at least yearly. Uh, bank accounts, um, at least for people for open stock files, for example, you need to at least be able to provide the members on how you're doing financially as a stock fell, how why is what's the money used for or how is it going everybody must be transparent where is the money going how is it going this is how it's used and this also eliminates a lot of the legitimacy of your stock fell um because now you know everybody knows where everybody stands in terms of their finances and also um the proper registrations in place, working with the right company also protects ourselves as members. Um, so it's important, especially with a lot of negativity that comes around stock fells specifically. So it is up to the stock fell industry, which are the people in stock fell, to make sure that it's run properly to protect their reputation of the model. So if one stock fell like Slindy Lays one is doing it properly and then there will be that culture of knowing that um, you, you can actually stock fell and make it in a best practice possible by making it run like a business. So you need to take it seriously once you're using the model as an investment vehicle. So the pop, those are the most important things. So Cindy, I, I, what 
I mean, what would you say is probably like the sweet spot, right? I mean, with any kind of stock file, we've seen that different people do it differently. Sometimes it might just be, for example, just 10 of you um, who will meet every month and it's socially. And sometimes you might find stock files that have up to 50, 100 people who are in that stock file. I mean, oftentimes when people talk about the stock file model um, where property is concerned, they often speak about um, you know, 20 people in your stock file. If you have 20 people and let's suppose um, everybody's paying 2,000 rand a month, at the end of the year, you'll have, about, you'll have nearly half a million. And if there are still 20 of you, you're paying 5,000 rand a month, then at the end of the year, you're going to have 1.2 million. So people like throwing around those kind of numbers and say, you know, if you're one person, get 19 other people and you'll have a million at the end of the year. What would you advise or what would you say are some of the different ways to play around with that model instead of just saying B20, here's the amount at the end of the year, you'll have whether it's half a million or 1.2 million. So it, it, it boils down to what is the vision of the stock fund, like I said, what is it that we're trying to achieve? Because if, for example, we want to buy each other houses and there's a hundreds of us, it will take forever and we want to do it in turns. It will, by the time we get to the hundredth person, it will be like 20, 30, you know, depending on how much we are raising, what our objectives are. <laughs> so, yeah. so really, it, 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 there's no one size fits all. I can't say 10 is the magic number or 20 is the magic number. There is no magic number. It depends on what is it that you're trying to achieve. It depends on your management skills and how you can actually manage. For example, we've got 120 members, actually more than 120 members, you know, which is a, which is a lot for a stock fell, you know. But I mean, we put systems in place that have enabled us to be able to handle those amounts of, um, of, of, of members. And we, we use technology, we use a lot of automation. There's a lot that, that, that goes into the preparation and the planning and to make sure that we can handle the volumes. But if you're just like a family club and you, or, or whatever the case might be, it might be worthwhile just to keep it small. And because as well, what tends to happen is that the more people there are, there are more people that have got opinions. So what tends to happen is that now, before we can even make a decision, we need to have a meeting and 100 people need to decide, we, we will never get anywhere. So it really is um, dependent on a lot of factors, how, how, we, how you're able to, to manage the volumes, how you're able to make decisions quickly, you know, putting those executives in place, like I mentioned earlier, who are able to make decisions. And it, like, like, it, like in a company scenario, when you've got a director, you appoint them so that they're able to make the decisions. So now if before you even sneeze, you need to contact 100 people, you're not going to get anyway. So it's really, when, if you're a smaller group, there's four of you, it's easy to just get everybody together, we make a decision and we move on. So it, I can't say there's a magic number. It really does depend. There's many variables that are at play. If you're just joining us at home, this is the Private Property Podcast with myself, Zamandunga Kumalo. And on, on, on the show this evening, I've got Slindi Lelisiane, who's the chairperson of Saki Sizwe Property Stockfile, as well as Balisa Leholu, who is a finance professional and an author. Uh, she's written a book on stock files and we're of course talking about property stock files interest rates went down um two days ago and we're really navigating how as a property stock file you can best take advantage of some of the um, opportunities that you're going to find in the property market especially given that we're now at historically low interest rates if you have any questions or comments you can send them down here and i'll ask it to my guests and we'll address them now ladies one of the questions that's actually come in is from Gosinati wiseman kumalo who asks with the property stock file do you still essentially use a trust or is it best to keep it under a company so um can i take that um so Stock files are not a legal entity. So if you're not going to be partnering with a property company or a, a real estate company, um, then you're going to need to turn your stock file in either a business, which is a company or a trust or a cooperative, depending on how many you are in the stock file. So a stock file on its own, because of the fact that it's not a legal entity, you're going to need partnership with a company in order to be able to do that. So most, what most people do is just turn the stock fell into a company, then acquire the property. Steve, do you have anything to add on to that? Um, I think Felisa has, has, has got it spot on. Um, so you need to register some sort of an entity if you want to be purchasing the property um, in the stock sales name. So that either the entity can be a trust or it can be a property, or it can be a combination of both, or a cooperative. So what I would advise 
uh, people who are interested in in, 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 in in having a property stock that is to, uh, um, to seek legal advice because it's not a one size fits all um, approach. You know, in some instances, a company would be best suited, in some it would be a trust, in some it would be a combination of both. So really seek out the legal advice. In some instances, it could be even in your, in your individual names, if your stock sales objectives is to buy the members the property. So understand what, are, what, is, what, what is it that you're trying to achieve and then seek the legal advice that will enable you to reach what your vision and your goals are. Um, some comments coming in from people watching us at home is we've got Bongi Musa uh, Matu who's saying there is money in property stock file. And one of the other questions was from Rindani Nanichifefe who was asking, how do you even start? How many people should join? And we've partially covered it, um, but perhaps Lee, you can take us through how would somebody start? So if people are sitting at home and are thinking, okay, this sounds like a great idea. I know I could probably get some people together or I think I can get some people together. What are the steps that they should actually essentially go through in order to have set up a property stock file? In my experience, it takes just one other person. Like for example, if I was to sit here today and think I want to start a stock file, I need to convince at least one other person. Then there's two of us. And then from then on we get the momentum, we get the third person, the fourth person, and, 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 and. So I can't say go out and get all 10 people before you start because what I found as well is that some people want a proven concept before they can join. So get people who are like-minded, who understand what you're trying to achieve, and rather you be three or four of you, but you're all aligned and you know what you're trying to achieve, then get 10 people who are just joining for the sake of joining. So I would, I would say that, you know, start with where you are, get that one or two other people who have got similar goals to you, and, and get the ball rolling with them. Just get the momentum going because the hardest thing to do is just starting. Whereas if you just start, get the constitution going, get the, get the contributions going. Once people um, inquire and see what you're doing, they'll be more likely to join you. But um, that's what I would advise. So, I mean, the, one of the a question that keeps coming up and maybe we, we almost need to uh, break it down at a slightly granular level. Uh, Cynthia Judgman is asking, as well as Nombong Onkosi and um, Kabela Tulani, they're asking around how you join, right? So suppose we've now set up, I've convinced one person, so Sli, I've convinced you that let's actually start this. How do then do we get other members, right? Because you, you were mentioning earlier um, that one of the things that you need to look out for when you're setting up uh, certainly within the constitution is, for example, how you exit. So if, let's say, we are already in, let's say, three months in, and it was just the two of us for that three months, and we've been contributing 1,000 rands each, by the end of that three months, we're going to have 6,000 rands. So when we're now mm -hmm. getting other people to join, are they first having to put in 6,000 rands so that they're almost in equal footing with us? Or are they just going to start at 1,000 and we'll just, as we'll, perhaps the constitution would have made provision that then the shares are distributed in a particular way. So how do people mitigate joining a property stock file that's already set up and running? So that, that depends on the constitution as well. You know, for, for some stock files, they will say that if you are joining and we're already six months in, you would need to catch up or top up what we would have paid prior to that. Whereas some other stock files will say, for example, for every thousand rand or for every hundred rand that you put in, equivalent to one share so whether i've joined in in november or in january so there's a benefit for me having joined in january because i've accumulated more shares than you who only joins in november whereas for you who joins in november you've got the option to to, to pay what the others have paid so that's another then equitable way of managing that but it all boils down to how is your constitution drafted so that is where that also needs to be taken into consideration to say what happens to the join to the to the, to the late joiners do they pay a penalty? Do they, do they for example, if, if, if I'm joining a stock for that's already maybe acquired a property, they've already got an asset. How do I then, um, you know, capture that premium or that value that has already been built into the stock file? So all of those kinds of things would need to be built into your constitution. Uh, and Balisa, so we, we, we heard earlier in the week, um, Reserve Bank Governor, uh, you know, decreasing the interest rates by uh, 1%. And it's the second 1% decrease in less than a month. And of course, there probably already are property stock files or even just normal individuals, but certainly property stock files who might want to take advantage of this opportunity. How do property stock files sort of take advantage of opportunities like that or big events like that that happen um, as a unit? 
Well, there's two things that uh, property stock fells serve, in my opinion. Number two is the economic inclusion of people who wouldn't necessarily be able to afford property on their own. So they join um, a, a stock fell in order to be able to do it uh, collectively and having the buying power to be able to do in, in a form of investment. And then there is, um, then there is a, affordability is a big thing for me in terms of stock fell so that's another thing that is in, and then number two would be if you are in a stock fell you already in a collective power to be able to accumulate um, contributions in terms of capital raising uh, and getting properties now with the card members number one needs to understand how does it affect them in in within the property stock fell and within themselves so for me, I'm big on educating members within stock files, whether you are in a property stock file, in a grocery stock file, it's very important to know what is the money you, you, that, that you are contributing doing. So in a property uh, stock file, I would, the first thing that you need to know as a property stock file member is the fact that now that the rates have gone down, it means now properties are becoming more affordable than before uh, the interest is much um, it, it has been cut so you need to understand that that you're going to have a bit of you're going to be buying you can, you can be able to buy more properties now because it'll be cheaper so that's the first thing that members need to understand and then how uh, you can how you need to have a strategy now in terms of now you're going to be having um, a bit of money to move around with are you going to be investing in more properties because now there's a bit of cash flow or are you going to be using it for other things within the investment of properties so it's very important uh, for the end going property education within members and to understand uh, how this affects them specifically that now we are making an investment um i, I like people within property still fail to ask the relevant questions to ask like okay now we're investing in this property and the interest rate has gone down what does that mean does that mean um are we getting a higher rate are we going to be making more money what are we going to be doing now differently from how we acquired in December when the interest rate was a bit higher. So it's very important to keep in communication with that and understanding and not being just a lazy investor as, as per se. Because these are the things that can help you even personally, which is another advantage of being in a stock fell. You learn together um, and you are in a position to be able to acquire more information. Mm. Yeah, so Cindy, I mean, you're part of, you're a chairperson of a, of a, of a property stock file. What are some of the questions uh, do you think somebody should be asking before they join a particular stock file? So if they're coming to yourselves, whether they want to join you or any other stock file, you know, what are some of the questions would you preemptively say people should already ask before making that big decision of actually joining a particular stock file? I think the, um, you'd need to understand um, around the finances, if there's a joining fee, how much is it, contributions, you know, what is, what is it that you're committing yourself to? Um, you'd need to understand, um, like I said, what, what we're trying to achieve here, what is the vision? You'd need to understand what is the exit, like what's, what's the lock-in period, that's very important. Um, you would need to understand what happens to my money. What are we investing in? Are we, are we passive investors? Are we active investors? Are we going to go out there pounding the streets looking for deals? Or, or are we going to be passive investors or invest in, the, in, the, in, in property shares? Whatever the case is, you need to understand um, all of that. You need to understand how, what is the level of risk that my investment is being exposed to. You know, how, do I, how am I going to make sure that um, I, 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 I get the return that I'm expecting? And understand the upside and the downside um, um, the risks that are involved. So do your homework around that. Do the due diligence. Um, understand who who are the people that are running the stock. You know, don't just um, see um, um, a, a stock fell wherever it is. Because I mean, traditionally stock fells in our community were based on you know people who knew each other, whether they were fa um, family or friends or, or church members or people within the same community. But now where the world is going is that we are now global and we're digital. So now you're able to to find people online that maybe you wouldn't have in the past. So do a bit of research, dig a little deeper and understand who exactly are these people, especially those, those open type stock files, who are these people that I'm investing in and, and, and what is their background? And Belisa, any, any questions you'd like to add to that, that people should um, be asking the new um, stock file that, they, that they'd like to join? 
Um, the type of property stock fell is it? Um, there's a big misunderstanding when it comes to property investment in the stock fell industry. Uh, everybody thinks property stock felling is buying each other houses. Um, there's um, three most popular ones, obviously the home ownership one, the building supplies one, and the property investment one. Um, so the home ownership one would be obviously the longer term one, where people are going to be putting money together for like maybe five to 10 years in order to buy each other property. There you need to really involve experts and lawyers and everybody and making sure that nobody is being done a disservice in a way like the 10th person for example and they usually are a smaller group so property stock fell when you are asking to join one make sure you know which one within the property investment is it is it a, the one where you buy each other house household supply i mean building supplies or the one where you buy each other houses or the one where you are investing in property so the one that is really um, becoming very popular and much easier to stock fell around is, is the property investment one where people are just going to be investing in property for income, not necessarily for to reside in those properties, is to just to invest in property, like buying property to rent out so that every, and then that rent is distributed to members. It's easier to manage than the other ones, but the, the, the point is make sure you know what type of property stock fell you are in those three so already i'm just mentioning those three but there's even more within the property industry so other people buy, uh, raise money to buy land um, so that is still falls under property so the question should be so you're investing in property don't just be excited by the word property no and must be go with them with your vision as Lindy let said, uh, what type of investment you would want to be, to go into, because you're not going into alone, you're going into as a group, make sure that you do one where it's convenient for you, for example. Um, we've got a question here from Spiso Chimbuzi, who's asking, how do you benefit from rates in uh, the collective, or there needs to be a juristic entity for finance? So I think they're asking if, if you've essentially set it up, whether let's say it's a trust or as a PTY, is that the juristic person that would be trying to access the finance and how do they essentially benefit if they are collective? So if you're purchasing a property in a juristic um, entity, like a trust or a company, you would need to, if, depending on the type of stock, so sometimes stock firms, they want to purchase the property um, for cash outright. So they would rather wait until they've got the money before they go in. Um, and actually purchase, and some are actually happy to take on debt. And also you need to understand with the members, they need to be comfortable with debt. And some people are not, but some people are. And also if you are comfortable with debt, what the level of debt would be, for example, you'd say you want to put in a big deposit at so 30% or 40% or whatever the case might be. So where you benefit is that obviously with, um, when you're purchasing a bond, when you're getting a bond, sorry, you it's normally pegged to them, to the interest rate, whether that be at, um, normally at the prime rate. So when the interest rate starts going down, it means that your, your repayments become less, which frees up cash flow um, um, for, for you because now let, 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 there's now a gap between, especially if your rent remains the same and now your bond is reducing. I mean, we've had um, 2.25 reduction in, in, in interest rate this year already. So that's a big difference in terms of how much you'd be paying on a monthly basis. So that now allows you to have those reserves available or that cash flow that's positive um, in, that comes back into the pool, which essentially could, let's for example, if you're paying a thousand rand and the savings that you've had from, from December to now is a thousand rand, that's essentially a free member contribution that's now coming in as additional cash, which now allows you to scale up a lot quicker than before. Um, and, and I'd like to hear from, from both of you ladies you know, around what are some of the lessons from either running or being part of a, of a stock fault, but particularly a property stock fault that you've picked up along the way. So lessons that you'd like to share uh, with our viewers at home around being part of a property stock fault. Well, I'm lucky to be part of Slindler's stock fault. <laughs> but I'm also part of um, Saki so It's so convenient for me because I'm very, I'm, I'm very busy. So, so for me, I'm an investor at heart. I, um, I'm a passive investor. I don't want anything that's going to make me work. I just want to put my money in to the right people's hands and then they must do anything. 
let them work it and however they and I do my thing. So what I like specifically with Saki Sizwe uh, being part of that property stock fell is the fact that um, I don't have to worry about anything. Um, they have partnered with property expect they've done all the groundwork and most importantly they're quite transparent when they're about to invest in a new property they let everybody know the breakdown of the finances of this is how much we are taking from each category this is how much we have this is how much it's um it's left so for it leaves you with no uh, with with no questions, but most importantly, it's, it's convenient to be able to to be in such a stock field because now there is it doesn't need um, your effort um, to be involved. Yes, you need to be aware and ask questions and like, where is this building? What does it look like? Is there a building that actually exists? Which is a very important thing as a stock field member because um, because of the scams that are around even the property stocks in the industry, it's an important thing to ask when you are in the property stock field that this building that you say we have invested in it, um, can I see it? The way is it? Um, it's one of the most important questions to ask as a member. So for me, if if your package is full of everything that I would ask as an investor and it's still convenient, um, it's a good experience for me as a stock firm member. And um, the lessons for me, especially with the, the way stock firms are going with technology and everything is how every how technology is also making the stock filling experience much easier we using an app that is transparent like stock filler uh, uh, being able to communicate and holding zoom meetings in terms of um, shows that there is progression as the world we are progressing we are using yes an old model of stock fill, but we're moving where the world is moving in terms of technology and how we conduct ourselves but most importantly if you are going to be an investing stock fill, you need to make sure that um, you are uh, you educate your members and you yourself are informed and uh, to just to protect yourself from all the scams and and making the stock fill also a legit movement um in a way so for me property stock filling has been quite um a good experience so far um uh, i'm looking to even diversify within the property stock fill because I, I really like property as an asset any lessons that you've learned along the way? Um, lessons that I've learned along the way is that transparency is key, especially when money is concerned. I think Valita has touched on that. So, you know, just that, that over communicating, <laughs> you know, because people need to know exactly what's happening at any given point in time. And they need to feel that um, you are accessible and that you are reachable and that at every point in time, they can they know exactly what's going on. So I think for, for for us, that's really helped to bring out there because I mean we have um, info sessions, we have virtual sessions, we we be using the app that um, Alyssa has mentioned, Stockfella, where each and every single money that goes in and out, members get notification. You know, even when we were throwing funds, we need to tell the members beforehand of this is where the money is going. You know, so that if they don't know what's going on, they're free to object and all of that, and the money is money then doesn't get released, you know. So I think just that that and, and, and just being organized and running like a business, running professionally, even though we are a stock fell and it's a social concept in South Africa, but it's got so much potential when it's being used and packaged correctly. So I think those are the lessons that I've learned, you know, in terms of just um putting the systems in place and running it like a proper business and making sure that you just maintain the transparency and communication with your members at all times. And, and, and ladies, you know, what would you say um, is one of the best ways for you know, property stock files to decide um, if they want to go from, let's say, to go either residential or commercial property? What are some of the considerations they should be thinking about um, when looking at how to disperse the funds that they have um, in choosing those two types of um, property streams, essentially? I would say it's your level of experience and education. I mean, I'm not familiar with the commercial space, so I mean, if I was, if you were to leave that decision to me, it would be, <laughs> you know, it'd be gambling with your money. So it really does boil down to your, your 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 own skills and comfort level. So where you feel that you know what in this area, mm -mm, I don't know what I'm doing. Find somebody who knows what they're doing, either as a coach or as a consultant, to come on board and work with you, with your with your stock fell to help you make the right decisions. Guys, if we're gonna be running stock fells as businesses, we must be willing to spend money that are going to money in the right way. So if it means paying somebody to help us um, make the right decisions in terms of getting into the commercial space, 
then, 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 then that be so. Like, for example, you can't also be having your executives who have never even bought a primary residential managing your, 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 your income, you know, your, your rental income, properties. Like, how's that going to happen? So it's all good and well to be excited, like Alice was saying, about you want to invest in property. But also check yourself. Understand what's my level of experience. What do I know? I mean, you've never signed an OTP before for your own property, and now you're going to be investing in property and dealing with tenants and dealing with maintenance. Like how? You know, I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying if, if that's what you want, be prepared to put in the, put in the work. You know, be prepared to go for um, property education or coaching, whatever the case might be, or to partner with someone to work with you until you are at a place where you are comfortable to do that. Now, ladies, before I let you go, um, I think the last question would be, you know, do you have any tips for our listeners at home in terms of how they can spot a scam? I mean, Valisa, you, you briefly mentioned this, but what tips would you have for, for our viewers in the best way to spot a potential scam or an actual property scam? Because we're seeing a lot of those. You know, a lot of people bringing out models around property stock files and six months later or a year later, they've got your money, but you, and they've essentially run away with your money. So what are some of the things that people should be maybe aware of or ways that they can use to spot a particular uh, or a potential scam? So first of all, if you are going to in, to join any stock file, you are gonna have to do proper due diligence because um because it's such a um, uh, low regulated uh, industry, you need to do your own homework and do it properly. And these scams have become so higher grade uh, yeah. these days that they come yeah. out so. They look very properly. Their presentations are tops and everything. So informing yourself for me is one of the ways of protecting yourself. Like if you are, if you know how how how, how things work within the property industry, if you know the financial information you should be looking out for, it's easy. I always say. Um, Financial education within stock firms can prevent can prevent so many stock firm members, but to be scared because you will know it from far away by just applying the simple the simple financial education um, principles. So for me, one of the red flags would be would be exorbitant returns um, within very short space of time. Uh, would be one of the things that I would question. And I remember when I, when you're looking for scams within stock files, you put you you put your list and you don't write it off just because of those things. That's where you're supposed to be deeper looking. So for me, I always do because I'm always looking to join like progressive stock files. So for me, I always make a list of okay, if the returns are like this, they are too exorbitant. Then that means I have to dig deeper into why, how is it made, what backs them up. I mean, if you're saying you're going to be investing in property that is gonna be returning 50% um, return per annum, I want to know what kind of property is this that is so so amazing like i need to see it i need to understand how it makes money so the the asset that backs up whatever investment you're making it you need to understand it and you need to understand how it makes money for me that is the most important thing you need to understand where you put your money how it makes money when you are putting your money in shares you in short right shares for example you know how shop right works you know that it sells food there is a shop right at the corner and it's a legit company is registered with the jse and if had if you you would lose your money you'd know where to go you know where their offices are uh, how accessible they are so i use the same principle when I'm shopping for a stock file to join, um, I need to, I verify everything. I even go to a, as far as asking for the constitution and the financials of the, of, of the stock files. If it's still a new stock file, I need a plan on vision on how they are going to, I know or not all stock files are able to provide what you're looking for, but I need something to give me comfort to be able to look to say, okay, I'm comfortable with their finances, I'm comfortable with the asset that they are investing in, comfortable how they are using um, their money, I'm comfortable with the companies that they're working with, are they registered, are they legit? So those are the extra homework, unfortunately, you're gonna have to do for yourself. There's, if you no, to there's absolutely no going around that. Uh, I mean, if, if you're going to be putting away your money 
um, whatever the amount is, whether it's a nominal amount like 500 rand every month or uh, as much as 5,000 rands every month. You know, the importance of doing your due diligence bef uh, before you put that money away is so important because if you're looking at it from a cumulative perspective, because it's, it's often not a once-off amount, you know, you're paying mm -hmm. every single month, you need to know that you're essentially going to get um, value for your money. Ladies, thank you so much for joining me this evening. This has been quite an insightful conversation. I'm sure many people at home now understand property stock costs just a little bit better and are able to make better decisions whether they want to set one up or they want, they want to maybe better run the ones that they're already in. Perhaps they don't have the right governance structures in place. This conversation has certainly helped them with that. Um, that was, of course, Celine Dile Lusiane, who's the chairperson of Saki Sizwe Property Stock Health, as well as Valesa Lekholu, who is a finance professional and author. And we're talking about um, how you can take advantage of lower interest rates as a property stock health, and really looking at some of the do's and don'ts as a property stock health in ways that you can, of course, maximize your returns. If you've been watching us, you've, of course, been watching the Private Property Podcast. And if you have any other, um, if you want to catch up, rather, on some of our past episodes, you can go on to our our YouTube channel and if you have any rental selling or buying needs you can go into our website on www.privateproperty.co.za. I've been your host Zamandunga Kumalo and thank you so much for joining us this evening. Ladies thank you.